Hello everyone! So a lot of you have been reacting to the post I recently gave on Facebook last September 11. And I just want to explain to you how I got and why I would even do this. Okay, so for those of you who haven't seen the post, you can follow me at Max Mamba or at Malkut Shamayim. It's a page. Um, but okay, so basically I confessed that I wasn't sure um yes here's the big irony of it right i've seen heaven i've seen a golden temple and i didn't know what it was and the only way i found out was after when i read the bible it was described as a temple of jerusalem and i saw god in it and i also saw a vision of jesus christ in a tomb and i cried for him and this happened during um passover of 2012 or 2013 and so i've had really intense um biblical visions of both jesus and yahweh and for most of you it would be easy to just surmise or believe that yeah you should believe in jesus and god the father is his father but it gets more complicated than that because i read deep hebrew <laughs> And I read scripture not as religion would tell me what to believe, but rather what it actually says and what the actual rules are. And what I found is that St. Paul ha um, has two functions. First is to try to reflect the signs of the chosen Messiah, which is also in the Old Testament as himself as the servant of Yahweh. Um, but it's just not right because that servant is female and it is evidenced by the Chronicles of Isaiah. So there is a great disjunct between the old, what they call the Old Testament, which isn't really old because a lot of the prophecies there haven't come to fruition yet, and the New Testament, where um, Paul basically almost seeks to discredit the Old Testament by saying that you can eat whatever you like, you don't have to um, pick what is kosher or not kosher, you can do anything in the Sabbath, just like the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath, and um, basically the rules that God had said that are eternal until his coming. More than that, and more problematically, the Catholic Church does not follow the Old Testament regulations on the holy days, which one very basic thing is keeping Shabbat. And it was written in Genesis to honor God who has created all of uh, all of the universe by respecting the, the seventh day so i read it in terms of what i fully experience in my own testimony and that is that i've been called to be zion which is the the first territory of david in the old testament and I have to understand it in that universal context and I'm able to see both the good and the bad sides of both arguments. So I am writing a book but in all this learning um, I also yearn to do what God has asked me to do which is to establish justice in the islands and the islands are the philippines beyond the jordan it's even beyond because this is where god has chosen to make me alive <laughs> to give me life and to give me um this life um and in terms of signs and prophecies, I've also had lots of signs and prophecies in my own life. For example, my son is named Emmanuel, even if I didn't intend it. 
Um, I have a Hanukkah candle, which I tried to observe Jewish laws ever since I've been to the Golden Temple. And it was not burning out. It kept on... Um, it kept on having a flame and it said who is my servant right and uh a wick he will not extinguish right and a burning wick he, sh he will not um snuff out and basically that's what i have on video on my youtube and malkutra mayim and a lot of these signs um are confusing and if there's anything that i know it's because I've had prophecies that have come true. And that's the typhoon in Cagayan, the typhoon Ondoy. And when COVID was coming, um, I read it as a, as like, like God would protect the Philippines from invaders, which was, I think, China was trying to invade the Philippines. They were bringing Pogos and other Chinese people in the country. And all of a sudden, they all started dying. And they all, almost all immigrants from um, the Chinese nations had to go back to their country. Um, so anyway, it's because I only speak to God through the Bible. And I don't hear a voice or any grand thing like that to tell me to do this. That I need absolute clarity as we come into the next chapter of the world's history and of God's time, right? So this is why I'm asking for a sign from God. And it's not one of doubt because I know my God is alive. I know God loves me, but it is a sign for all of us, for you to also gain faith that God is alive and that he is not a God of memory or a God of just words or scriptures from the past, but he is a God that is all-powerful and omnipotent and omniscient, and that he is just as alive now as when he split the Red Sea, you know? So I just have to call in mind an example, which is also the story of Gideon. So a lot of you are familiar with this man. Basically, he was... he. An angel first appeared to him and called him a mighty warrior. And he was absolutely not the mighty warrior type, okay? So he was from the smallest family and, and his family was poor. And I feel also that I am also not equipped to be like a, a prophet or like Zion or like this because I'm just a normal person. I'm just, I'm not educated as a pastor and i'm not a priest but god has shown me and taught me all these years preparing me through humility and lessons how to speak to people in his name so that you might know of his glory so it's kind of like that and when gideon um was or met god god asked him to destroy altars of Baal, right? And he did. And um, after that, God asked him to go to war against the Midianites to protect um, the Israelites from them. And at that time, the Midianites were the ruling class and they literally ruled the territory and got tithes from all of the Israelites. And this was a big ask. And so Gideon asked for reassurance by saying, Lord, can you, can you give me a sign and uh, have fleece on top? Um, have like the dew on the fleece, but then have the floor dry. And God gave him that sign. And then he asked again, okay, can you just make, I just want to make sure that it's from you. And can you make the the floor dry and then the the fleece have the dew on it and again god um humored him right and that's what also my request is about because i've given my life to god and i'm pretty sure that whatever he asks i'm gonna do and he's given me a great mandate and that is to establish justice in the islands in the islands of the philippines 
And for me, that has been a long-standing calling. It is bound by his promise that my family should be a blessing in this world. And it is bound by, for me, how I am going to make this happen is three things. And that is to defeat poverty. And that's a big thing, right? But I'm going to do it with God's help. And the second is to teach so that our people will not be ignorant and they would also know who God is, right? And the third is to help people feel God's love through their abundance and through wisdom. So all of these things um, I am preparing for, but now I, I am very, very scared because I take my responsibility very seriously. I know that uh, when I speak for some something, um, usually I have that responsibility that if I don't tell people that God wants to warn them, their life is on my hands, That is is in my guilt. That is the burden of a prophet. If you don't warn someone and they still do what they, with the evil that they're planning, then their guilt or the life, their life is on you. And so I want to warn people, I want to do my work properly, but I also have to introduce the correct God, the right God. And for these 10 years, it seems all these studying has just made me more confused. So I'm just going to ask for leadership for God, who is alive, and it's an act of faith that he... I, it's like I'm letting him be God and I'm letting him lead us as a nation to show signs and wonders like he did for Israel and like he did for so many others, for Gideon. By the way, for Gideon, um, him asking for a sign comes with a price and that is that Gideon had to whittle down his army from thousands to three hundred. And that 300 would be fighting the thousands of the Midianites. And I'm ready for these acts of faith. But I just need to know that I'm serving the right and true God. The God that created all things and the God that is benevolent and true. And because of this, my, my ask and my prayer was for his guidance. And in this in this prayer, it's also showing all of us God's glory and God's might and God's power through an earthquake. Now, when it happens and where it happens shall determine the true nature of God. In the olden days, when people used to sacrifice to Yahweh, fire would come down from the heavens. And that's just one of the things that he does. So I know that he can do this too, if it's him. And, you know, if it's not, then we'll know that who is not God also, right? But I hope not, right? So I know that if this doesn't work out, the only one that is made to look like a fool is me, right? But at least, this is an opportunity to give faith to so many people for them to believe in the one true God. And I am excited for it. <laughs> okay, so can you imagine Jesus Christ also raised people from Lazarus from the dead in reflection of like how Elijah raised the widow's son from the dead in 1 Kings 17, right? So also God split the Red Sea from when the Israelites had to cross it. And I'm going to read it from Exodus 14, 21. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all the night the Lord drew back the sea with a strong east wind that turned it into dry land. So the waters were divided, and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with walls of water on their right and on their left. So... Nothing like, like even in the New Testament, um, Jesus says that 
Um, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So, I think it's time for us to believe in a God that works wonders, in a God that's omnipotent, in a God that is powerful, right? So, it says here, like how Gideon... Um, the sun stood still and the moon stopped until the nation took vengeance upon its enemies. Is this not written in the book of Yashar? So the sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down until about a full day. So in Joshua 10, 13, that is written. And so if there's ever a time that we need faith and we need to believe in something greater than ourselves, it is now. And I know that God will be faithful and God will show the world His power and might. And you will have, my Philippines, a true God to believe in. So.